Welcome back to City Scene. We are out at one of the coolest parks that Greenville has. We got a lot of cool parks, don't we, Tim? Oh, we do. And this is one of the coolest. It's the off-leash dog park. Off-leash dog area, I guess, typically is what it's called. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. It's the dog park. That's what we all call it. Yep. We call this guy Tim. Tim's our animal control supervisor. Awesome guy. Friend of all pets. How are you, man? Hi, you doing, Steve? Tim Langley. Uh, it's always a good time to see you out here. Yes, sir. Now, it's about that time of year again. Summer's winding down. School's back in session. we got a lot of new students uh, who've come into town from ECU. Maybe they're on their own. They've never had a pet of their own before, just a family pet, but now they're getting a pet. Oh, so yeah. So let's, let's turn to you for some advice for these kids. Uh, I say kids, but you're the young adults, right? Oh, yes, uh-huh. The older you get, the more they're kids. Oh, yeah, indeed. indeed. So what kind of advice would you have for kids as they're getting pets for the first time on their own? Well, I've, I've always been an advocate of students, if they want to get a pet, to get one. Uh, but just remember the responsibility behind that. Uh, having a long day in class, uh, certainly when you get home, there's pet shows unconditional love, so it's kind of a stress reliever to you. But when you're away from class, uh, that's, that's where the canine uh, could have some issues with separation anxiety. And uh, I'll go over some of that with you if you like. Okay, yeah. let's talk about that. And let's, I guess, first in the selection process, mm -hmm. if you got a small apartment, you don't want a big work dog, right? That's correct. Uh, most apartment complexes have something in their lease of what, what size or how much the dog can weigh before you can get a canine. You wouldn't want a, uh, a German Shepherd in a, a little small apartment because he's not going to have no room to move about and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, you make sure when you do uh, rent a place, uh, make sure that you check the pet policy on the lease. And, and you mentioned a, 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 a German Shepherd. The, the work dogs, they're not dogs that just sit around all the time. They need to be walked and they need to play and they need to do things. So if you're not gonna have a lot of time to do that, that's not a pet you should get, right? That's it. When I, when I was saying something about separation anxiety, you have a large working breed like that. When you're at class trying to learn what you need to learn in class, the dog is home gnawing on the uh, coffee table leg and he's just uh -huh. separate. You know, so you got to depend on what kind of canine you need to get, whether it's a Chihuahua, German Shepherd. But each, for each person, it's, it's what's, what's unique to them. But just keep it in mind the size of the apartment what they can have and things of that sort. Now, once they've got the pet, what kind of requirements do we have as a city? What are the animal laws that, uh, that are most common for folks that they need to be aware of? Well, as I've mentioned uh, on past shows, uh, when you obtain a pet, it's a lifelong responsibility to that pet. You need to provide the proper shelter, water, uh, proper care and attention, and most of all, love. Uh, you know, uh, the state law says you don't have to love your dogs, but Hey, I love mine. You have to feed them. You have you to do? give them water. You do. That's it. What's the right shelter requirements? Uh, it depends on, again, the size of the canine. Uh, you can uh, go out and shop yourself, and you always want to get a, a proper dog house uh, so that is for the exact same size of the canine, so when the canine goes in there, you can at least turn around and get comfortable. Uh, if the dog is kept inside the house, that's simply a personal choice, the way that you want to keep them in the crate. Uh, we call them crate trained, mm -hmm. or if you're comfortable enough that when you go to class to leave your pet roaming the house. But one thing that I would suggest that you do if you have a, a dog that uh, shows some signs of pet uh, uh, um, um, aggression, anxiety, not, yeah, anxiety, yeah, pet anxiety. Uh, you want to maybe leave the television on. Uh, just the sound of the voice, uh, your yeah. the, the, of a voice on television sometimes keeps the animal calm music, you can turn the radio on, all that does help. Uh, and then if you have a re very rambunctious dog, I would suggest some, some kind of remedial training such, such as uh, social, socialization and different type classes like that that's offered at different places here in Greenville. Okay, and once you get them no used to other dogs and socialize and stuff, off-leash dog area is a great place to be, but I noticed in the title, off-leash, there is a leash law inside the city, isn't there? Yeah, there's a 24-hour leash law. That means any time your canine is off your property, you have to be with your dog on a, on, on a leash or, mm -hmm. or some kind of tether under actual physical control. And what, what, so I like to take this time to remind people that we're standing here at, I believe, one of the most used parks in all of Greenville. Absolutely. I mean, this we have hundreds of visits just a week out here. But remember, when you're leaving your vehicle with your canine, 
make sure that dog is still on a leash because you're still in, it's still in the leash law until you hit the transition area and then that's when you can let your canine loose. And it's really neat, you mentioned the transition area. They come into this first area, we just saw two dogs transitioning out of the off-leash area. Yes. You come in here, you get them either into the small dog area or the large dog area. That's where you can take the, once the gates are closed, that's where you can take them off the leash. They go down and then you get them into the other area, which is the big area where they play. Yes. Uh, uh, every dog that comes down here should have been socialized with other, other animals, mm -hmm. other people. The transition area is sometimes, especially the the, uh, the busier times of the, of the day for the park, the transition area is a transition not only for the human but also the animal because there may be a large number of animals in here. So it kind of gives an animal a few minutes to get adjusted to what he's getting ready to get into. Mm -hmm. And then from there you can you can either cho choose if you have a small dog, you can choose a small dog area or choose a large dog area. And I love the dogs who've been here before you can tell because once they get that leash off, or they go tearing down, they know they're gonna get they to know. go play and have oh, a great they time. They know, some come down here daily, they know, and, and they know just as soon as they turn off of First Street, <laughs> they're there where they're headed to, they it's, get excited. It's a great park, you mentioned it is used a lot. There's been talk about a second park for dogs down the road. Uh, you know, this gets so much use, you could probably use one. Uh -huh. so let's get back into, into what's necessary and, yes, and, and things like that. You gotta feed your dog, you gotta give the dog water. Uh, and for folks who are having a tough time because you know, economic times aren't always that great. Where can they turn to for help if they need food? Well, we have what is the pet, the, uh, the pet food pantry of Eastern North Carolina. That's about a year old now here in Greenville. And uh, to date, they've given out 31 tons of uh, pet food. Uh, as you said, uh, this is a tough economic time. And uh, I've seen people that live in three or $400,000 homes uh, that lose their job, the next thing they know, they're falling on hard times. So, yeah. it, so it knows no economic or any social backgrounds, whatever. So the biggest thing is, is that you can look for them for help uh, and um, go out there and they'll be able to help you out. Do you know, do they have a website or a special phone number you remember off the top of your head? I know we didn't really talk about this ahead of time to, to prep you for that, but how do people get in touch with the you Pet Food You can just pantry? simply uh, Google Pet Food Pantry of Eastern North Carolina. It'll pop right up because Google has that way of just finding your location and uh, call and talk to Christian or one of the nice ladies there and they'll, they'll get you help, get you hooked up on something. Okay, now say uh, someone gets a pet and after a couple of months they realize it is just not for them. You don't want them just turning them loose, opening up the door, what can they do? Well, call us and we're, what we'll do is first we'll, we'll ask them a few questions, you know, is, is the dog friendly, is it good with kids and things like that. And we'll suggest uh, contact some area rescue groups, maybe contact the Humane Society. They're always looking for adoptable dogs. One good thing about the Humane Society, once an animal goes there, it's there for the duration. It's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't euthanize there. Um, <clears throat> but um, if you don't, I'd rather for you to call us and we pick the canine up and try to find a rescue group uh, than you let the dog loose because you don't know where the dog's gonna go the canine or the whatever pet you have could get hit by a car. Right. It could suffer for days. We don't want that. Right. Yes. You want what's best for the dog. That is correct. You yes, know, sir. you mentioned good with kids. I forgot to mention this. When we're talking about the off-leash dog park, you cannot have small children in the dog park because not every dog is good with small kids. That's correct. Right? Yes. So there's a height requirement for it. Do you remember what it is? I know it's uh, on the it's sign a, out here. I don't remember, it's, uh, but it has, a, if, if you don't know, you just have your child stand up. It's like a, like a ride at the fair. You just stand up there, and if my kid is too small, I can't go in there with them. And I, what I've seen, and what is very dangerous, is I've seen uh, parents in there, that have their babies, infant babies, in a uh, uh, knapsack or a little baby carrier. That is a no-no. Do not bring an infant for sure in there because you never know what's going to happen. Right. And that's the reason also for small children. Uh, children have no fear of animals. When they see a cute and cuddly animal, the first thing they want to do is the uncardinal rule that we ever never want to do is... They go right to them. Yeah, they're right there and stick their face in the canine's face or something. They don't, don't like that and they could, could be causes for something tragic. Okay, so pay mm -hmm. attention to the rules when you come to the off-leash Yes, sir. Yes, okay, uh, so we covered an awful lot of stuff, but if people have more questions, uh, want more information about animal control, who do they call? Anytime, Steve. Call our office, 329-4387. If they want to contact me directly by email, tlangley at greenvillenc.gov. Okay, and if people see a dog that's locked up in a car, windows rolled up, and it's hot, it's sunny, that dog's in distress, what do they do? Who do they call? 
They can call the Greenville Police Department's emergency line 329-4300. If the dog is severely in distress, call 911. Uh, don't take the assumption somebody else is going to call. Take the assumption nobody's called. Let's save the life of the animal. Sounds good. Thank mm -hmm. you much, Tim. Always, Steve. Always. always a pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you.